Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I wanna to talk about 3D printed terrain. Terrain that's printed in resin and terrain that's printed in filament in which option might be best for you, especially if you have both technologies in your home. Now, when it usually comes to things like terrain or miniatures, if you wanna get the best quality possible, then resin is going to be superior. It doesn't mean that the filament-based models are gonna look horrible, they're gonna be awful, they're gonna be trash, and everyone's gonna hate them. It just means that resin has the edge. It's just the way it is. But what I wanted to do today was take two of these terrain pieces. They are identical. These are from the Death X Tiles Forest set. I printed one of these tiles in resin. That's the purplish grayish one here. And then I printed another one in this filament, kind of like a light skin tone filament. Now, right off the bat, when you look at them, you can probably tell which one is which. Now, at a passing glance, it may not be so obvious, but when you get nice and close, you can see that the one with resin is definitely smoother and that those layer lines are not as pronounced. I printed the filament one on the Bamboo Lab A1 with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a standard quality setting. So I didn't do anything crazy. And then this one in resin was printed on the Hay Gears Ultracraft Reflex RS at the 50 micron layer height. And again, nothing really fancy about that, just hey, print it and go. But the cool thing about these two models is that none of them need supports out of the entire pack. I printed this one in resin, no supports at all, and the one in filament also zero support. So it's easy enough for anybody to be able to jump in and immediately start printing this particular type of terrain. So big ups to the creators of this for making it as easy as possible. Now let's talk about material usage because that is really important. Now, depending on which tile you're trying to print, you're gonna use a different amount of resin or a different amount of filament. In this particular example with this single tile, this used about 30 grams of filament versus about 70 milliliters of resin. Now, 70 milliliters of resin for a single tile piece like this, in my opinion, is a little much for my taste. So you're not gonna be able to print a whole lot of these before you have to switch over to the next bottle of resin. Of course, it makes it a lot easier if the resin that you're using happens to be on the cheaper side. So, you know, it takes a little bit of the sting off. You can also hollow this if you want, but the whole danger, if you will, of hollowing your prints is this is not gonna be as weighty, so it's gonna be a little bit more flimsy. And then you also just have to make sure that you add your drain holes and that you can properly cure the inside of the model as well. Because if you don't, that resin's gonna find its way out eventually and it's going to ruin everything. So typically when it comes to miniature type stuff, I think that you should always print solid. But there is a very noticeable difference in weight between these two, with the resin one, of course, being a lot more solid. And these bases are pretty thick. They're thicker than I thought that they were going to be. So it has a really good weight to them. And these two printers, you see that they did a really good job. These look pretty much identical as far as the structure goes and all the little bits and bops that printed on the base. So that's a little bit about the material usage. Time is also gonna be another important factor when it comes to printing terrain pieces. And when it comes to resin, of course, you can print everything all at the same time and everything gains a layer as that build plate moves up and down. So how long it's gonna take really just depends on which model on the plate happens to be the tallest. As opposed to filament where your nozzle is just going from each model simultaneously and just helping each one go along, unless you choose an option in the slicer to only do one at a time. So for this particular um, situation, it took about, I wanna say around two and a half hours for the filament. I think I have a picture, so I'm gonna show you exactly how long it took. But the resin one took about twice as long, at least twice as long. It's gonna depend on the type of printer that you have, but the printer that I use, this one definitely took around four hours to complete. So I was waiting around for this to be done. But the other challenge that I discovered was getting this this off the build plate, of course, was easy for filament. You just take off the build plate, wait for it to cool down, give it a flex, it pops right off. It's absolutely beautiful. But getting this off of the build plate when it came to resin, 
it was a bit of a hassle. When it comes to printing with resin, when you use supports, it prints a thin raft on the bottom. So it's easier to get that scraper under it to pop the whole thing off. But this entire platform was just stuck on the bill plate and I could not get my scraper under it good enough to pop it off, it was getting kind of dangerous. So I had to just kind of work with it on the edge. And then eventually when I got the blade under it, I had to use my other hand to pop it off like it was a hammer. If I had a whole build plate full of these things, I mean, it would just be a hassle to get them all off because you would need room to really start to work it. So while it's a great thing that it's not printed with supports, it was also a double-edged sword to me. So if you got one of those flexible plates for your resin 3D printers build plate, that'll make things a heck of a lot easier when it comes to taking them off. So like I said earlier, the detail is going to look better for the resin print. That's kind of a given, but I wanted to see how much different these would look if they were actually painted. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. I'm going to prime both of these with black primer, and then I'm going to paint them. I'm going to try to make them as close as possible. There's going to be variations, but in the end, you'll be able to see the finished product on both of these. And then you'll be able to determine whether you would rather go with resin or would you rather just stick with FDM when it comes to printing terrain and see that if it's good enough for FDM, or if you just want the highest quality, you're just going to stick with resin. So I'm not very experienced with painting, but here's what I managed to do. So here are the two models all painted up. Now this one right here is the one that was printed in FDM and then the one right here is printed in resin. I did my best to try to make them as identical as I possibly could, but you can take a look at this and see for yourself which one you like the best. And if the one that you like the best happens to be the resin model, does it look so much better than the FDM model that you would use the extra resin to print out an entire set of these tiles? Or do you think that the FDM model is good enough to be used as just background scenery for the main focus of the game, which is going to be, of course, having fun or the miniatures themselves? And I didn't do anything special to paint these up. I didn't use any good specialty paints, just the cheapest hobby paint that I can find at Walmart, which I think when it comes to sort of grim, dark scenery like this, especially if you don't know how to paint very well, like myself, it helps you to get away with a lot of imperfections because it's supposed to be dark and grimy and colors that don't quite look right next to each other. It works because of the atmosphere. And just to get a sense of scale, here's just a little miniature here in that regular 32 millimeter scale. So if you were to have a complete dungeon or a complete scene with these guys and you got like some orcs, well, this is roughly what it will look like. So that's gonna do it for this video. Let me know down in the comments, what is your preferred method of making terrain? Do you prefer the FDM side of things or would you just rather go with resin and keep the resolution as high as physically possible? 
Really curious to know that, but that's all for now. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.